All right, all right. What's going on, everybody? Happy Thursday. It's 6.40 p.m. September 24th. A lot has happened in the market. Lots to talk about today. We're going to start off with Bitcoin, all right? Our darling, our favorite. So I am sure that everybody was caught off guard, um, basically surprised by this big, massive movement to the upside. And I'll be honest, I was too, okay? But let's kind of zoom out and look at the bigger picture before we sort of get emotionally driven and start making bad decisions uh, based on what has happened over the last several hours. What can we look at in terms of the market objectively to tell us if things have changed? Well, let's look at it this way, right? First things first, I wanna let you guys know, um, our community was short from way the heck over here. Um, we took a little bit of profit on an ETH short down here. And then of course this thing started to, you know, um, move back up aggressively fast. But here are things that have pretty much been unchanged. Okay. First things first, I think when we came down to this key support area, right, we went back up, we basically are hitting this trend line that you see right now. Okay. So, in that regard, all we're really doing is, after we broke down through the trend line right here, we're coming back up, retesting this trend line. If we start rolling back over from here, well, we should start going down at least towards 10,584, which is this key marker. And if we break that, we should be going back towards 10,250. And if we break that, then we're definitely going to $9,800. Right now, it's a level to level play. Okay, a couple of days back, I told my community that from here, I think there's a couple of objective paths that Bitcoin could take. Either it's going to you know, break up towards 10,584. If it breaks that, it's probably going to hit $10,815. I did not expect this range to you know, take out a bunch of longs right here and then rock it back up. But Bitcoin being Bitcoin, of course it did that, right? So now we come back again to that same objective outlook of this trend line being turned into resistance. And of course, then this key area, which is 10,815, if y'all see that marker, this horizontal marker being retested as resistance. Remember it was previous support, 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 broke through, and we have not tested that area as resistance, okay? So I don't think anything has really changed other than the fact price has you know drastically moved up five or six hundred dollars right just because remember the price moves up you know a few hundred dollars really fast doesn't change the objectivity or how the technicals are lining up which is trend lines you know kind of facing resistance for price horizontal ksr levels you know blocking price right now all these things take out the emotion effectively of this kind of movement right and so when you look at it from my perspective, what I just showed you, I don't really know if I can definitively say that, all right, guys, you know, from here, we're definitely going up. Now, let's just say, you know, I wanted to make that bullish argument though, okay? For the sake of, you know, playing devil's advocate and, you know, me potentially being wrong and us just looking at it, uh, looking at it from a bullish perspective, we could say, okay, well, maybe this was, you know, the wave five top of a local, you know, five wave movement. This was a A, B, and a C. That means this could be a one, two, we might be working on a big three and then a four and then a five, right? That is very possible, okay? Alternatively, I think there are, you know, different counts that we could draw too is, you know, we're maybe in a different kind of correction where this is a one, two, three, four, and now we're still working on a fifth wave, which is, potentially heading down towards $9,450, $9,200, um, you know, for the, for the reasons I've stated before, which are 9450 is a key SR level, which is a June monthly open, 200 moving averages where the 9,100 marker is, and then yearly VWAP is right around $8,800, right? Let's zoom out again on the daily perspective, okay? And this is where things get interesting because I've seen this kind of movement in Bitcoin before, um, I've also seen it in the stock markets before where you may think that, you know, after a key high was set, right? So first we have a, a high, a lower high, you know, this is your first low, your second lower low, right? 
Now we have another lower high and we're actually looking for another lower low down here. Do we have that yet? Obviously not, right? We have to see if price is going to turn around from here and start heading lower. Then we will have established a definite downtrend. Technically, we are, you know, you can make the argument that we are definitely in a downtrend because this is a high, a lower high. Here's your low, your other lower low. You know, um, if you've established two lower highs like that or two lower lows like that, you can make the argument that, okay, guys, you know, temporarily we're in a downtrend. But the third lower high and a third lower low definitely gives you confirmation that we are in a full blown downtrend. So we don't have that yet, All right? So this is where the, the iffiness and the uncertainty is coming from. On the 15 minute, okay, so let's look at pivots. All right, and let's turn on the VWAP as well. So we are above the pivot, of course, we're above the VWAP. Not only are we above the, uh, uh, the daily pivot currently, we're also above the R1 and the R2. You can draw this kind of like this. I think that this is really the range that we're in right now, okay? And we just broke out of the range to the upside. Now, what you want price to do is you want a quick retest of this range and you want to start moving up and away. You don't want to be spending too much time around this area, dilly-dallying around here and coming back inside the range because what that'll tell me is, okay, maybe this whole move is finished. Maybe we can get, I don't know, maybe like a one, two, three, four, and a fifth wave. And now we're maybe in an A, you know, B, and a C down, right? Again, there's complex wave counts that we could make out of this, but I'm going to keep Elliott Wave out of this for the most part, just to show you all from a horizontal perspective what we're looking at. So like I said, on the 15 minute, you want price. If you are a bull, you want price to tap and go. You do not want to be spending too much time around this area, especially coming back down inside this range. Because if that happens, I personally think this is a shorting opportunity. Your stop could be 10,850, 10,900, and you could start aiming back at least back towards, you know, this area right here of consolidation or possibly 10,250, which is a key SR level. Okay. So those are the couple of different ways you could play it. Alternatively, if you think that we're going to bounce from here and you start seeing price move back up again, well, this is your longing opportunity. Your stop is going to be below this area, which is 10,575 or something. And you could start targeting, you know, at least this trend line, which is around 10,925 or R1 up here, which is 10,000 or $11,300. Okay. So those are a couple different ways you could play. Uh, personally, I am still short. I don't really have any reason to start closing out my positions because I don't think anything has really changed other than, you know, maybe just some, some wild activity, wild movement in the market, which probably squeezed out a bunch of positions who shorted way the heck here at the bottom. Um, yeah, I really don't know if we can make the argument that anything has changed. Okay. But again, I remain open to the idea that I could be wrong. And if I'm wrong, what's going to happen? Right? Well, we're going to get above this 10.8 area. I might have to start trimming down my short position up here uh, if we get up here because then it's possible that we move way the heck all the way to 11,300. And, you know, in which case, why would I want to risk, you know, um, price getting up above this area and still holding my short position in a loss, right? So that's, you know, a couple different ways I'm looking at it. Now, daily perspective, this is where things get interesting, okay? So I've seen this kind of story before where, you know, price um, is bouncing off some key moving averages that I've been looking at, which is, you know, the 128 moving average that you see. Um, but again, you know, it got rejected at the 50, right? So we haven't quite broken above the 50 moving average, which is in the red. So this again goes along with my theory that this is still a high, a lower high, another lower high. And, you know, this particular lower high that you see right here, is actually you know, a strong rejection right at the 50 moving average. So in my opinion, nothing has changed unless we either break through that moving average um, and then start you know, moving up you know, towards like 11.5, 11.7, okay? Now, here's what I wanted to discuss, okay? So this kind of bullish engulfing candle, you may think that, okay, yeah, this is a bullish engulfing, woohoo, you know, we're gonna start pushing up higher. 
I don't know if this is something that you can count as a strong bullish engulfing and this is you know, definitely something that you want to lock, at least not yet. I'm not trying to deter you from longing. I'm trying to explain to you that there are different nuances at play that you may not be able to definitively say that this is a longable candle. I don't even know if that's a word, but you know, I don't know if you can make the um, you know, simple argument that this is definitely a longable candle is what I'm trying to say. Right? Because we've seen that kind of thing you know, in this kind of downtrend right here, where there's this kind of bullish engulfing, as you could see, right? So we had, you know, uh, on a daily basis, we had this key high, this key low, and then this thing tried to put in a lower high, right? With this big bullish engulfing candle, but people thought that from here, we're just going to push on up. But in fact, we had a big bearish engulfing, and then we put in another lower high, and then we got set lower, okay? I know there's a lot of arrows in that, but you can make the argument that this is where we are, or you can make the argument that maybe this is where we are, where we put in a massive, at least back then, right? Back in February, right? This is the same argument as what we're going through right now, which is way the heck over here, okay? And I'll show you that from a structural standpoint, okay? So here's our, here is our high. Here is our, technically our, you know, first low right there. Then we put in another lower high, another lower low, right? But then we put in, you know, another lower high, yet we don't have another lower low, right? This is, by the way, this is where we are right now, this area right here, okay? So guess what happens after? Boom, multiple days of selling. Now, again, that's, you know, one argument to be made that, okay, well, maybe this is going to happen. It doesn't mean that we can't go up from here. I totally agree, but I'm just trying to show you that there are situations, you know, like that, right? And the bullish case is, um, you know, maybe we're, I don't know, maybe we're something like this area right here where we have, you know, this could have been seen as a high, this could have been seen as a low, this was seen as a lower high. We didn't really have another lower low. Well, actually you can look at it differently. You could say a high, a lower high, right? Your first low, another lower low, and then you have another lower high right here, but we don't have a lower low. Technically you have a higher low. So we don't have that higher low yet. So we'll see, you know, from this standpoint, okay, when we put in another lower high right here, do we get another higher low? In which case, maybe we start breaking out. Now on the weekly perspective, this is also where things get interesting because I've seen this kind of movement before, okay? So we had a top created, a low, right? And then we were trying to defend this level right here, which is a $10,584 level, right? I've told you before why that level is important. Where do we last see this kind of structure? I'll show you guys exactly where we saw it. It was seen right here, okay? We had you know, somewhat of a high right here, okay? We put in, you know, some, some form of a base. We put in a reversal green candle, which again, looks like this green candle that you see, right? And then what happened is we printed a hanging man. By the beginning of the week, and I still remember this week in September, by the beginning of the week, it looked like this candle was going to close way the hell down here. But then by the end of the week, it closed like this, which closed as a hanging man, which again is somewhat of you know, what we're printing right now. And the following week, we see another sort of hanging man, another bearish candle, and then boom, we get a big drop, okay? So it could very well be that we are maybe in that state right now, okay? Anything can happen. The reason I look at prior history of, of you know, how Bitcoin has moved is because Bitcoin, for the most part, shows you indications of how it defends key levels, okay? So it's, this is not about how the fractal looks. It's about how Bitcoin defends key levels, all right? And in this case right here, I think the way Bitcoin was defending this key level versus, you know, let's just say Bitcoin was not trying to break below this base right here, I think it's the same way, all right? So those are my thoughts, you know, bull bear, right? Now, of course, the stock market is doing some really wild stuff. Um, 
you know, very, very choppy. Even Fassel and myself, Fassel is the equities analyst. We were talking about this. Very choppy, very hard to get a direction. So don't think that, you know, why the heck didn't I long right here? And why didn't I buy this? I'm so stupid or anything like that. Don't worry about that, guys. Because remember the daily picture, the weekly picture, I think they're all showing you signs of weakness. And in fact, I would probably say, even at present moment, if you're thinking about any position, I would probably say the best risk to reward is short. Because if you're shorting, let's just say here, your stop is up here, right? So let's look at it this way, okay? So from a swing short standpoint, okay, this is your stop just above this area. Your first target is at least, at least these lows right here, which is 9,800. Your next big target is at least 9,450, which is right around here. So you have a 2.69 risk reward. Now, if you're looking at long positions, right? Say you're getting into a long or you wanna get into a long. Well, this is your long opportunity for a swing. Here's your stop and your target profit has to be somewhere around this high or maybe 11,300, right? Because that's the four hour pivot that I showed you. Look what the risk reward is. It's one to one. You're risking maybe a dollar to gain a dollar versus earlier what I just showed you was let me see, you're risking a buck to make $2.69. So the risk or reward is completely different, right? ETH, I think it's showing you, you know, same signs. I really think that, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum have not clearly shown signs of strength. You may think that they have because they made this massive movement up. I really don't think it's as bullish as most people think. I've seen this kind of noise before. Unless Bitcoin and Ethereum, let's just say ETH comes back up here, right? Gets above this 355 area and then it starts moving up. Okay, then I'm wrong. Then that means that we're probably going at least back to 385, maybe even 400. But until then, all we're really doing is support, 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 flipping as resistance. Okay, so even with the, um, you know, things like Link, right? I know I had a few people talking about Link. Again, I stated this to my members earlier. I said that Link has a pretty high chance that it could start getting rejected at 1075. The reason I was saying 1075 was you know, it was just above these highs. But look, Link came back to the same area, previous support, previous support, right? And then it came back over here as resistance. Technically, this was also resistance, but it broke down way the heck down here and now again testing as resistance. So point is, I don't know if things have changed a whole lot, and I do encourage you guys to do your own research and be a little bit more careful, okay? Do not follow crypto Twitter and thinking that this is, you know, the, the most bullish thing that Bitcoin has done, uh, and then from here, we're going straight up, all right? Just be a little bit more balanced in your approach, be a little bit more careful, um, and then approach the market, all right? Um, alternatively, you know, I've also seen kind of you know, this kind of thing right here where you range, break to the high of the range, come back down, you know, BART, and then boom, right? You guys have seen this, you know, number before. You know what I'm talking about. So that's what I'm saying. You know, don't, don't think of this as, all right, this is, you know, massively bullish. We've retested 10,000. We couldn't break it. Now we're definitely going to go up. I don't know. Just be careful, okay? So you guys have seen, um, you know, the gains reviews, you see my analysis that I do on a daily basis for my Advantage members. And I hope you all do come join our Advantage community. Go to the Alpha Trades, um, go to the products page right here and buy the Advantage membership. Or you could buy the technical analysis course, guys. Um, it's only 20 bucks. And once you do buy that, there's uh, five course videos in there, you know, giving you the basics of how I read charts, how I analyze the markets. I think it's a fantastic course for only $20. And with 20 bucks, you get seven free days in the Advantage community. The Advantage community is all these lock channels that we have in our Discord, which is the Alpha Trades Discord right here. All these lock channels that you see right here, lock, lock, locked, all these locks, all these locks, all these locks in DeFi, equities, options, all this stuff is what you get access to. The free community, this is all you'll see. But the locked channels, this is where all the magic happens, all right? So make sure y'all come join. Let's check out Trading Light, right? So what's going on with Trading Light? Um, I think for the most part, you know, these bids right here, or I'm sorry, these asks, okay? You can see 
price for the most part, you know, it torched through them, but I think some of them, I was looking at the uh, order flow earlier, some of them actually got pulled. So price did not actually rip through the high asks, meaning the sells actually did not all get filled. So it's possible that the sellers possibly lifted their ass up here or maybe up here as you're seeing it right now. Again, I cannot objectively say that, you know, Bitcoin did not rip through the cells because from what I saw on my basic research, and that's not what it looked like to me, uh, because here's the thing, right? Open interest right here did not climb a whole lot. So this kind of tells me that when price moved up, whoops, when price moved up right here, right here, right here, like this, I think this was more so of a short squeeze. I don't think this was like actual spot buying, actual buying of long positions. I think it was actually a short squeeze and this is why you don't see a massive rise in open interest, okay? Um, and the other way to look at it is, you know, the CBD right here, right? The way you can look at that is, CBD, remember, is cumulative volume delta. It helps you understand the market buys to the upside or if it's going down, the market sells to the downside. Right. If you're looking at market buys to the upside CBD, which price went up like this, that means that if shorts were being closed out, remember when stops get hit, when shorts get squeezed, those are market orders that get bought on the other side. So think of it like this. If you have a short order, right, with a stop right here in this area right here. Okay. When price goes through this area, it stops you out by buying a long on the other side to close out your short. But it does that with a market order. So this way you see the CBD going up, right? You see price going up, but remember what's happening behind the scenes. Well, behind the scenes, it's not necessary that the price is indicating to you that there are real market buying or, or you know, real buying, ha uh, there's real buying happening. It's in fact possibly a short squeeze. And this is why, in my opinion, I think this is why you don't see open interest rise a whole lot. Okay. So that's my argument in saying that this is possibly a short squeeze. And I think we're probably going to return back down. But like I said, you know, the bullish case is still there. I cannot argue against that. Right. If we start getting above 10, 8, 15, well, then maybe it's time that we go revisit this supply right here, which is around $11,300, which would also take out this key high. Okay. Um, you know, link, same thing, right? I don't know if you can make the argument that link is just done other than this, you know, one big bullish candle right here, this bullish engulfing candle. I don't know. I think uh, there's a lot to be made in terms of arguments that, okay, well, we, you know, rolled over with the lower high, low, lower high, lower low, right? And this trend line that you see, we're just tapping against that trend line right there. So what's the real bullish argument? I don't know. There's not really that big of a bullish argument until you start structurally breaking higher and higher. Okay, which is again, possible, but it ain't here. It ain't now. That's what I'm trying to say. So we'll see what equity show us tomorrow. You know, we'll see how the weekly candle closes for Bitcoin. Uh, but I don't know, I'm not sold yet. Uh, the bulls are doing a pretty shitty job, <laughs> to be honest. If they're going to push the market down, gosh, I mean, they are slow as turtles to actually, you know, roll this thing down. Um, so, you know, who knows? Maybe these are all traps being laid down by the bulls and, you know, there's going to be an epic short squeeze to the upside. I don't know. I think structurally, I feel a little bit comfortable in saying what I told you earlier is, you know, we have a high, low, lower high, lower, low. We're still looking for a lower high and a lower low down here. Okay. Um, let's also dig into the footprint data. Okay. I want to check this out because um, this will kind of give us an indication of what exactly is going on behind the scenes. So let's dig in. So remember footprint data, you get to see these little beehives, you know. Um, let's turn this off. Let's turn off the heat map. And now you get to look at it a little bit more clearly. So in footprint data, it, it helps us understand, again, you know, what is the kind of activity that's happening in the middle of the candle at specific price levels in terms of you know, market buying, right? 
So here you can see you know, pretty decent market buying going to the upside, um, decent selling, okay, but also pretty strong buying. So I cannot make the argument that, okay, well, from here it looks weak and we're going to head down. No, you know, I, I can't say that, right? Objectively, I think this looks pretty good. Um, there's not a whole lot of arguments to be made that this looks toppy or this looks like we're going to break down. I don't think so. I do, however, think that this area right here, this area right here, I think will get tested. Why? Because look at the, the transactional volume. 50 million on the sells, 53 million on the buys, 27 million on the sells, 22 million on the buys. So a lot has taken place right here. So I would not be surprised if price revisits this area, which is about 10,650 with a rollover to the downside. And if we get a bounce right here, right? It's possible that we start heading back up. If, however, we break this thing and we start rolling back down, well, then I can tell you that we're probably headed to the next higher transacted area, which is way the hell down here, right around 10,400 and some change. Okay, I don't see it any other way, right? Um, it's not necessary, by the way, that we come back to this area. It's also possible that we just start ripping up, you know, but we'll have to see, you know, if there are real buyers stepping up to the plate and willing to drive this thing higher. And I think that will also be seen in the equity markets as well. Let's check out how the DXY is doing. Oops. Let's see. Yeah, DXY had a pretty strong rejection right here, right? Right at the base of this key, um, this key channel, this key zone that I was looking at for the last several months. Um, so we'll see, you know, we'll see how tomorrow goes, but that looks like a, Definitely looks like kind of like a reversal doji looking candle. So I don't know. I guess it's possible that from here, maybe we roll over a little bit, in which case it's also possible that equities and Bitcoin do push higher. But if this current candle, current day today, starts pushing higher, well, then I am fairly confident that this was a short squeeze and then we're going to start rolling back down. Okay. I don't know if I could look at it any other way. see here talk about ETH talk about Bitcoin um, I think that's pretty much it guys um, yeah that's it so y'all take care um, you know I'm gonna be off for the next couple of days uh, I'll be traveling uh, so do watch this analysis share it you know ping us on Twitter um, also just join our discord community I'm pretty active in discord even if I'm traveling or on vacation, I'm always responding to the questions from my community members. And uh, yeah, I love, you know, how active our community is. We're always chatting about different things, what's going on, you know, who's buying, who's selling, what are they buying, what are they selling, all kinds of really interesting stuff. Um, and so you can see our, you know, Discord is pretty darn active. You know? So if you are looking for an active Discord, um, come join, all right? That's it, guys. Y'all take care. Cheers. Have a good rest of your evening.